The Fitbit Sense is a totally new sensor studded fitness watch, temperature, stress sensing, and ECG. I've got it on my wrist. I just haven't been able to set it up with Fitbit's app yet. That's because it's strange times. Normally I'd be in an event looking at a demo. Instead, Fitbit sent me the watch, but they haven't connected me yet with the Fitbit app that would allow me to use this. Still, I got to talk to Fitbit about the sensors and there is a lot to talk about. The Fitbit Sense is Fitbit's newest top-end smartwatch, going alongside the Fitbit Versa 3 and its various other trackers. The sensors on here add to what Fitbit already had, adding temperature sensing to check your skin temperature on your wrist, EDA, which is electrodermal activity that looks at your galvanic skin response to check how stressed you are, and it adds ECG, which is to look at heart atrial fibrillation, much like the Apple Watch and a lot of other fitness watches out there, Samsung's recent watches have it too. Now Fitbit tries to blend all these together with also a few improvements on some of the other sensor tech. The heart rate optical uh, setup here now has multiple optical channels, which Fitbit says will give a more accurate heart rate on more people's wrists. That's interesting because not only should it provide less flaking out, but it could provide a richer flow of heart rate data. Why that's interesting, I'll get into that in a second. But the design of the watch feels a lot like a Fitbit Versa. I mean, it basically is an enhanced, nicer Fitbit Versa. But the feel of it is sleeker, there's more metal and glass. It feels really sharply designed. I can already feel that comparing it to the Fitbit Versa 2, which I've been wearing for a while. The buttons have changed. There really is no button at all. It's a haptic depression here that you can feel. It doesn't click but you can press and get a little vibration. That's like what you have on the Fitbit Charge 3 and 4, so it's come over here as well, but no buttons at all. The way the straps attach is much better. The Fitbit Versa 2 got really weird and it was hard to get those straps hooked in. These have a much easier release mechanism here that you can click and you can just pull it right out and it pops out and then you can put it right back on, super simple. The feel of the charger is also a lot nicer. Fitbit has a million different chargers and there's a new one for this, but this one just snaps on and that's it. It's a lot better than that weird alligator clip thing that was on the Fitbit Versa models. So what does all this stuff mean? All of these sensors going on at the same time? I mean, some of them I've seen before. The idea of trying to sense your stress level through galvanic skin response has been around. And Fitbit is going to be using it in a breakout app that's going to get your stress level when you put your palm right over this to get the electrical conductivity. This whole thing here is metal and not only does the EDA stuff, but will do ECG when you put your fingers on the edges to complete the circuit. Temperature is the sort of thing that we have not seen in a lot of other wearables, but it's super interesting. I've been wearing an Oura ring for the last few months. This ring has temperature and is a sign of where a lot of other wearables I think are going to go. It can't tell your actual you know, 98.6 skin temperature, but it will tell a relative temperature on your finger. Same thing with Fitbit Sense, and you'll get a graph of that. Oura's been researching for a while how temperature could be a forecast for potential signs of COVID. That's something down the road that could be interesting. Right now, Fitbit is taking temperature and all these other variables and bringing it together into a, a kind of daily stress score that you're gonna get in the morning, similar to what Aura already has in, in a readiness score. That score is new for Fitbit. It, maybe it's like the daytime version of your sleep score. So you wake up and kind of get a little bit of a sense of where you're at for the day. Maybe it helps you get a sense of, you know, if you're not feeling so well, maybe it's noticing that. I'm curious to check that out. Now the weirdest thing is that while this has temperature sensing, this actually isn't the only Fitbit that's gonna have temperature sensing. It turns out that Fitbit Versa devices for the past few years have had some sort of temperature sensing baked in that was meant for the internal system. And now they're unlocking that through software to use that to help sense your skin temperature as well. That's pretty insane. The third part, ECG, is pretty familiar already. You know, any watch that has ECG already, like the Apple Watch, is using a one lead ECG, an electrocardiogram, to complete a circuit, to scan your heart for 30 seconds to see if you've got any signs of atrial fibrillation. Now that's serious, and then you go to a doctor, you go to a cardiologist, and it's not a replacement for, for a deeper 
ECG that you can get at a cardiologist. For instance, these types of ECGs won't look for signs of a heart attack. Now, Fitbit is not FDA cleared yet for the Fitbit Sense. It's pending. That's also not new in wearables. Samsung's uh, Watch Active 2 took a long time to get FDA clearance for ECG, and uh, a lot of devices are, are seeing holdups that I've seen in that landscape. So, you know, hopefully that's going to hit in the fall, but we just don't know when. And it means that at launch, you may not be able to use the ECG feature. Again, how do these all intersect? Fitbit's throwing a lot of sensors here. And one thing we haven't even gotten into is the Google acquisition that's pending. But I did talk with Fitbit's heads of research to talk about what they see on these sensors and what they could possibly mean. To date, our focus has been on trying to increase the, the accuracy of the heart rate, and uh, we're quite proud in the improvement that we're getting there. Uh, one can envision that there'd be more information associated with this um, that could help with other types of uh, sensing opportunities. Right now in the, in the app, what's called EDA Scan app, we're going to count up the number of spikes that we see every 30 seconds and report that back to you as a user. So you can get a, a very a very approximate measure of the overall state of engagement of your, of your body uh, just by taking a sort of snapshot in time of the number of these responses. So we continue to add more and more of these things where I think you wouldn't necessarily, you know, if you were just the average person, you might think that's not what my wearable should do. <laughs> but I think we we take a view that more information is better for, for you. We want to give you and empower you as much information as you can so you can choose to do what you want with your health. I think that is an ongoing thing, you know, as we add more hardware sensors, as we add more features, we're always trying to think about how we can consolidate these things and give people actions uh, and guidance to improve their stress levels, increase their activity and make their activity more efficient towards their heart health, uh, etc. Give them general awareness of conditions that they might be unknowingly susceptible towards. So there's a lot to take in, and Fitbit's ideas of where these sensors could be applied for research show potentially a long road ahead. That doesn't mean you're going to be seeing all that right now on your wrist. There are going to be a couple of key parts, but not necessarily all that deeper stuff. Now, we also don't know anything about the impending Google acquisition and how that will impact Fitbit. Will these be the last Fitbit devices that we see? Will they be folded into a new generation of Google ones? And how will Google's ecosystem work with Fitbits and Fitbit Premium? These are unknowns that Fitbit did not answer. But I do know that these types of sensors open up new doors that aren't on a lot of other smartwatches. And I think that new sensor tech is gonna be showing up on a lot more wearables soon. What we don't know yet is how all these sensors combine on an everyday wrist experience. But we will soon when we get set up to actually use this thing. I'm super curious and I'll share my thoughts as soon as I can. I feel like all of these things are fascinating for where health tech is going. Maybe you feel the same way. There's gonna be a lot of changes in wearable tech over the next few years, and Fitbit Sense seems like the beginning of it.